Warning, the podcast you're about to hear has a unique conservative perspective and may be politically incorrect, containing some controversy in its message. This episode may speak out against liberalism, socialism, the dark state, and religious organizations. It is possible that evil in politics, education, law, society, and religion will be discussed and exposed. However, we believe this podcast adds truth and value to a mature, disenfranchised audience who may be tired of apostate religions and wicked world systems. Listeners who are easily offended, overly sensitive, or have progressive leanings sympathetic to the topics we expose should be forewarned not to listen any further. We thank both those who choose to listen as well as those who choose not to listen. You've been warned. And now, let us get on with the show. Hi, Ms. Cabal. Hello, Brother Kapow. Today is Freedom Friday. It's August 23, 2019. 23, 2019. Excellent mundo. Okay. Crazy stuff today. <laughs> when is it not crazy? I know. But before we get started, we're going to do a scripture reference, and then we're going to get right into... The show. Uh, yeah. Nuts. Okay, today's scripture reference is um, Psalm 94, and it reads, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belong, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger, and the murder of the fatherless. Yet they say, The Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will ye be wise? He that planted the ear shall he not hear, and he that formed the eye shall he not see? He that chastises the heathen shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Mm. Mm. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Well, before we forget, I just want to say that this story disappeared, and we were going to talk about it, and I don't know why it disappeared, so I want to get it out of the way. Yep, that's a good idea. It was from msn.com. So we assume it's a good story. Yes, we did. So I don't know if it was fake news or why they took it down, but it's no longer there. You can't find it. But I do have it documented on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. Fifth Hook Media, Facebook. And it's from msn.com, and it says, God saved a cathedral. In England, some offer mini golf or giant slide. And the picture... The picture does look bizarre. It's a big uh, cathedral in England, and in the middle of it is um, AstroTurf and miniature golf and yeah. people playing um, games in the church. And um, what I wrote is, you know, this is not satire. It's so sad that, um, you know, that all these churches are just... Yeah, and it's just not this cathedral. It's churches everywhere where um, there's disrespect you know, for the things of God. And there's such an apostasy that, you know, there's the churches are just a big thing of entertainment. Yeah, just big clown shows. But what was so sad about it is these are like, you yeah, know... I ancient mean, buildings. Ancient buildings have been around for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. And people and, come here and they reverence the place. Yeah. You know what I mean? The big water slides and stuff. What's and interesting, so though, this. is oh. when you click on it, it now disappears. And it says it's no longer available. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if, if it was fake news. I don't know how it got on MSN. But anyway, if you want to see the picture of this, yeah, it's on our Facebook. Facebook. It, it's just odd. So I thought I would mention that right off the top because it did disappear mm -hmm. for some reason without telling us what it was, why it, why it, why it split. Um, this was from Breitbart. Yeah, it's time to rethink taboo on cannibalism. What? Yep. Time to rethink the taboo on cannibalism. Now, folks, before we get going on this, here's here's what this does. This simply desensitizes the reader. It's programming. Mm -hmm. It's suggesting. And it's trying to change the attitudes slowly um, about cannibalism. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what this is. That's what this is for. So it says there is nothing necessarily unethical or unreasonable about eating human flesh. Yuck. Declare psychologist Gerard Piazza and Neil McLachey, both of Lancaster University. But careful reasoning over the merits of cannibalism is often overridden by our feelings of repulsion and disgust. You yeah. think? Mm-hmm. It's like that old movie, uh, Soylent Green. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Soylent Green is people. Mm-hmm. Yuck. Well, not going so far as to recommend cannibalism. Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> saying there is no need to overcome our repulsion for the foreseeable future. The two authors, oh, man, they wrote a book on this, suggest that humans could master their aversion for human flesh if they needed to. This is this is disgusting. It's disgusting. Um, Dear Lord. They go on, they say, many people develop disgust for all kinds of meat, while morticians and surgeons quickly adapt to the initially difficult experience of handling dead bodies. That's different than eating them. Yeah. Yeah. Live humans have always had to dispose of dead humans mm -hmm. since humans. Exactly. You don't eat. And, and that's, that's part of their job requirement for yeah. morticians and surgeons. It to serves, touch. They're trying to fix. Yeah. yeah. Dead people. And learn. Our ongoing research with butchers in England suggests that they easily adapt to working with animal parts that the average consumer finds quite disgusting. Not even the same thing. No. Mm -mm. Moreover, the psychological revulsion experienced over the prospect of consuming human flesh is not the product of reason and may even contradict reason. They argue in Wednesday's article and um, the survivors of the famous 1972 Andes plane crash waited until near starvation before succumbing to reason and eating those who had already died. See what they're doing here? Yeah. You know, they're using these terms before succumbing to reason. It's just reasonable mm -hmm. to eat human flesh if you had to. Why wait till you almost starve? Just just do it. It's okay. This this is this is sick. This is this is definitely demonic. Yeah. It's very demonic. It, it's um, when you th just think it can't get worse, mm -mm. it just continu continually does so. Yeah. And then they continue on to say that all sorts of animals eat members of their own species, from spade foot tadpoles <laughs> and Australian redback spiders to gulls and pelicans. Oh, yeah, my. but that's not human. Yeah, I'm not a tadpole and I'm not a seagull. No, and I'm not a pelican or a <laughs> redback spider. No, we. that's why we have... Um, the thought process, allegedly, and the spirit in us, mm -hmm. allegedly, uh, because we don't do things like that. That's why we're humans. Mm -mm. And demons do these kind <clears throat> yes. of things. And they have. They yeah. have. When you go back to Enoch and Jubilees, one of the big things is cannibalism. That's right. They ate all the resources, and when the resources were gone, they yeah. turned to man, and they mm -hmm. started eating humans yeah it's totally demonic yep. totally that's why we get those old uh fairy tale stories you know about mm -hmm. hansel and gretel and some of those other ones b five fo fum yes. i smell the blood of the englishman, englishman. yeah and it's all anti-god oh, god, god yeah. says thou shalt not eat human flesh god said oh god man there was all kinds of flesh you Mm -hmm. Shouldn't do let alone human flesh and the blood. Oh my, oh my gosh, goodness. what an yeah. abomination. What an abomination. And cannibalism can even be found among mammals, they said they added, such as with many rodents as well as bears, lions, and chimpanzees. Now, again, my <laughs> argument is we're none of those things. No. Mm -mm. None of those things. Those animals don't have the reasoning of humans. Mm -mm. And so they say as yet, a, humans seem entrenched in their conviction that anthropophagy is simply wrong no matter how many conditions are placed on hypothetical scenarios. Yeah. Human revulsion towards cannibalism stems from our tendency to associate, quote, personhood and flesh. Well, you think? The authors propose even when the flesh in question is no longer living. Even if we can bring ourselves to deem cannibalism morally acceptable, they contend, we can't silence our thoughts about the person it came from. And so our bias against eating human flesh persists. This is some sick puppies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is some sick puppies. Basically, man. they want you to go against your own moral compass. Yeah. 
They say research shows that the more we think of animals as having human properties, that is, as being like us, the more we tend to think they're gross to eat. <laughs> really? Mm-mm. I don't think, I mean, you know, I'd like cows. Yeah. If my neighbor had a cow, I'd be kissing it and stuff like that. But I don't have a revulsion to having a nice hamburger or steak mm-hmm. now. Or chicken or anything like that. Fish. Now, if it had a human face on it, I might. <laughs> well, noting in passing that philosophers have argued that burying the dead could be wasteful. What? In the context of the fight against world hunger. Oh, mm. Hear what they just said? Yeah. <coughs> Some philosophers argue that burying the dead is wasteful in the context of the fight against world. In other words, it is soil and green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We Let's can eat feed people. the people with people. The authors ultimately do not propose breaking this taboo for now. That's in quotes. Mm-hmm. Saying, we're as happy as you are to continue accepting the wisdom of repugnance. Yeah, but I don't believe that. No. I think they've already started. <clears throat> the whole idea of writing this book and these articles... Plus, we've read articles where, um, you know, a lot of the uh, aborted fetuses have been yes. used, you know, like in Nestle's and whatever. And, and um, was it Pepsi, stem cells, yeah. all that mm-hmm. stuff? Wow. What a bunch of sick, 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 sick bastards. Can I say that? Yes. Can I say that on my own oh, po- Lord, podcast? Oh, Lord, come soon. See, it's like the the scripture that I read today. Lord, Lord, what about vengeance? When are you coming to, you know, your vengeance? When are you going to come in wrath on these uh, these these idiots that have destroyed your creation? You know, I mean, we're waiting, waiting, and waiting. It's just worse and worse and worse. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah. How long, Lord, will that wicked triumph? Yeah, and they are triumphing. They're, Believe me, they run impunity. the show. Impunity. Impunity. Oh, speaking of impunity, once again, I'm going to have to preface that both Ms. Kapow and I supported Donald Trump as president, mm-hmm. not because we thought he was so great. It's because the other. It's because we didn't have much of a choice. If I had my preference, I would have went with um, probably Cruz, more than likely, right. mm-hmm. as, a, as a professional politician mm-hmm. that had been there and had actually done some fighting and stuff, but they never made it. No. So my choice was kook and, and kookier. Yeah. That was my choice. And there was no way I was going to go with kookier. She, mm-hmm. I mean, that was crazy. So he turned out to be better than I think we all thought he would be mm-hmm. at first. You know, I mean, he's. it, it, it appears that he's done some pretty good things, I think. Mm-hmm. And, this, and the accusations that have uh, been leveled against him in large part have been, you know, bogus and stuff. Now, I'm, I've said from the beginning, let's not forget who this man is. Right. He's a multi-billionaire. He is not you. He's not one of us. Um, there's whole agendas we don't even know about. Money trails when you get a guy like that with that kind of wealth sure. up there. So, you know, I'm not I'm not an idiot. I don't fool myself. Yeah. And I'm certainly not one of those. Yeah, he's not Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. So these idiot evangelical Christians that call him Cyrus or call him the man of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or God put him here to turn America around. Yeah. Nope. Those people are brain dead. Mm-hmm. You just brain brain dead people. It is what it is. He's a he's in there. Um, they're all crazy, and it was like the less of the crazies. But now, you know, if you notice, he's saying some things that are pretty nuts. And this is something where, in my opinion, you're crossing the line. So I don't know what his spiritual advisor says about this. Paula White mm-hmm. um, and uh, Kenneth Copeland yeah. and all those other, you know idiots that are on his uh, evangelical praise team. But this is from uh, theweek.com. And it says, Trump says, uh, I am the chosen one. Okay, yep. so it's a video, and I watched it. Ms. Capow and I, I watched, watched it. it. And in fact, he does, he does say that. Yep. Now, in context... To be fair, he he says it. He's talking about the trade war going on with China, and um, he's talking to reporters outside the White House, and he's saying that none of these other presidents did anything, and no one did anything. He's the only one that does something. Mm-hmm. And then he says he he says, "I'm the chosen one." And when he does that, he takes his hand. He says, "Somebody had to do it. I'm the chosen one." 
He takes his whole body, he turns mm-hmm. to the left with his hands open, That's and right. he looks up in the sky. Mm-hmm. Yep. Clearly referring, his body language there, clearly referring that I'm the chosen one of yeah. the sky god. Exactly. <clears throat> which is Lucifer. That's right. Lucy, Lucy. But anyway, I watched the clip. He clearly does that. Now, the the liberal media can make a big deal about it and all this stuff. How much they want. But the fact is, he did say that. He did do that. I'm not comfortable with that kind of language from anybody. No. But it is what it is, and that's what that's what he said. He says that he was the chosen one. So, taken out of, uh, taken out of context by the liberal media mm-hmm. that hates him, you'd go, okay, all right. So, the guy turned, he, the, hey, I'm the chosen one. Okay, one time. But, nay, nay, there's no. two things that came out. Yeah, the same day mm-hmm. that show that this is just not quite right. And this is from Vanity Fair. And it says, Trump declares himself king of Israel, the second coming of God. Now, if that doesn't put chills up and down your spine. Yeah. And once again, to be fair, the the headline is not quite true because did he declare himself hey, I'm king of Israel, the second coming of God. No, someone else did. But he retweeted and agreed with that guy's assessment of him. Yeah, so So he might as well have said it. Yeah, he's he's in line enough, whereas whereas, (laughs) should have looked at that and said, either ignored it uh, or said, hey, though I'm not the second coming of God, thank you so much for your support. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. But he doesn't. Nope. He says, thank you. So here's this dude. If you never heard from him, this guy's called, um, his name is uh, Alan Rood, R-O-O-D. Yeah. And Miss Kapow watched, uh, we we watched a couple of his things a while, a year, a year, year and a half ago, ago you yeah. know. Like and he's him. one of these Messianic Jew guys who apparently turned evangelical. And he comes off like he's a Christian. He has mm-hmm. the big long beard, the yeah. typical, all that garb, all that religious. And he's really into prophecy. Yeah, prophecy, and he does all that. It's called the Rude Report or mm-hmm. something. Rude Awakening or something. Yeah, and um, we quit watching. We just watched it. Yeah, you, you once could, or twice, and it was like, nah, you I don't tell like he's this a, guy. You know, he's just not biblical. But Mm-mm. that's where this comes from. Apparently, he's he has a big show. He's big on YouTube. He's, he, of course, Lucy in the Sky. Yeah, uh, put these it. beats up. So he's the one. He's the one that said this about Trump, and then Trump uh, agreed with agreed it. with it and and retweeted it. So that's the problem here. It says um, the president is sick of disloyal American Jews who apparently don't know what's good for them. Mm-hmm. But Jewish people in Israel love him, according to the crazed conspiracy theorist Trump quoted on Twitter. Um, let's see. It says, it's been an uneventful... Now, remember, this is Vanity Fair, so it's very anti-Donald. So they're going to say a lot of stuff very anti-Donald. They said, it's been an um, eventful 18 hours in the fevered mind of Donald Trump. Yesterday, the president unleashed an anti-Semitic rant in the Oval Office in which he declared that Jews who vote for Democrats are either uneducated or disloyal. Unfortunately, with about 70% of American Jews being registered demos... It's a lot of disloyalty. So Trump looked elsewhere for answers. And lo, he found an unhinged supporter who says Israelis, the real Jews, love Trump like the king of Israel and the second coming of God. And then he cited him on Twitter. So that part is true. Um, I read it. I've seen his tweets on that. So that's true. It says it's probably self-evident that anyone claiming Trump is the Messiah is not right in the head. I agree. But just so it's on the record, Wayne Ellen Root. Um, are we thinking of the same guy? Because I thought I thought it was Rude, R-O-O-D. Yeah, it was, okay. You know what? I may be wrong on that, so forgive me if it's Rude. If there's a if there's a dude out there Rude, because mm-hmm. uh, the guy I remember was Rude, like the Rude Report, R-O-O-D, yeah, R-O-O-D. and he was mm-hmm. a Messianic Jew mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. That's the guy I'm thinking of. But me if, too. If it's not him, uh, my Sorry. Apo- my apologies. I yeah. still didn't care for him much, but my apologies. Um, this guy, Root, I'm not sure if it's the same guy, R-O-O-O-T. No. 
Yeah, Wayne Allen Root. Anyway, he's a self-described Jew turned evangelical Christian uh, and an unhinged conspiracy theorist who believes the uh, 2017 Las Vegas shooting was a coordinated Muslim terror attack by ISIS and George Soros. Paid, okay, blah, 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 right. We don't care about that. He's, they're, this is Vanity Fair, and they're going to knock everything down. But it says, Trump incredibly seems to believe that he's going to win over Jewish voters by telling them they don't know what's good for them. Um, or perhaps he's just given up on American Jews. He's looking to the um, likes of this narcissistic uh, supply, insulting, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, so it's very anti-Trump. Uh, but um, yeah, where's the tweet here? See, the tweet's disappeared. Where's mm -hmm. the actual tweet? Uh, so all you all you have is this article saying okay. what he did, but I don't have the he actual removed, tweets. Remove things. Uh, here's again. some here, but I can. Um, I don't know if I'll have it on there, but he he did. There it is. Oh. I, I got it. It says um, what what uh, the president tweeted. He says thank you to Wayne Allen Root for the very nice words, and then he quotes: "President Trump is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world." Not just America. He's the best president for Israel in the history of the world. <laughs> <clears throat> and the Jewish people in Israel love him. Him. Where's the rest of it? Uh, well, look at this. Things are just See, changing yeah, everywhere. They are. Where's the rest of it? This is uh, like he's... Um, it just says they love him like he's the king of Israel... They love him like he is the second coming of God. But American Jews don't know him or like him. They don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. It makes no sense. But that's okay. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's good for all Jews, blacks, gays, everyone. And importantly, he's good for everyone in America who wants a job. Wow. So it sounds like this root guy is a blathering idiot. Does mm -hmm. it not? Yep. Is, I mean, really. I know. He's the best in the whole world that's ever been. Mm. So anyway, so take it for what it's worth. Um, like I said, we supported Donald because it was like kookier, kookier. Yeah. And I do like some of the stuff he's done. Yep. And he never backs down. Yeah, I like when that. He uh, confronts the kooky kooky. Yeah, and I'd still rather have him than um, old Boomer. Mm -mm, yeah. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. All this stuff is just phony beta television anyway yeah. that's why it's, it's a big soap opera it is and that's why it, it feels that way it feels like a reality show mm -hmm. it really does so yeah you can't get too wrapped up i don't get too wrapped up in it no but this kind of stuff here is is, is annoying mm -hmm. very annoying because there's i think i'm i'm more annoyed about how uh a lot of these evangelicals will take this oh, you know yes. go, yeah he is the easiest mm -hmm. yeah they're children, still looking for the third temple so. he's their messiah yeah. That's what they were hoping him he's gonna do. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I well I heard he's I heard there is a third temple, Miss Kapow. We're wrong. That there is a third temple gonna be built. Donald Trump's gonna sit in it like God as he's God and it and he and it's in ice Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like a big Trump Tower. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the other I mean, that's the other thing. He yeah, you know, I mean this is crazy. Trying to yeah, buy He was gonna to go to Denmark, but because they won't sell Greenland for to him. Yeah. He's, He's not going him. there now. Yeah. Then he, then he kind of said something about, we, we protect you, but you're not paying enough money for NATO. And so now we're you're going gonna to have to pay more money, $100 billion. <laughs> it's just crazy stuff. But um, It's very mafioso. Yeah, you, you know, me. I don't know. I wasn't there, but I don't know how you could just kind of go, hey, we're going to go to another country and buy, and, and ask if we can buy part of it. Mm -hmm. I said we buy part of Mexico, then you just open the border, and then and it's then all yeah, in the United it, States, mm -hmm. and we're done. Okay? <clears throat> okay. But that would be too easy and to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It would be part of the soap opera. Yeah. Yeah. This is a soap opera. Buying Greenland is a soap opera. Um, either that or it's the bots, the, the artificial intelligence has taken over everything. Oh, yeah. So us humans that are still left, we're just hearing all this weird news, but mm -hmm. it's them just going crazy. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, that's why they sound like demons. People are still drinking bleach, this article says. I didn't know they were drinking bleach in the first place. No, I didn't either. I remember when you told me this, I was like, what? Yeah. And they're vomiting and pooping their guts out. Excuse me. 
And then the, this is the second part that really got me. The Church of Bleach. Yeah, I never heard of them. Is still going strong despite years of warnings. Years of warnings. And I'm thinking, how could I have never heard of the Church of Bleach? So the U.S. Food and Drug Administration this week released an important health warning that everyone should heed. Drinking bleach is dangerous, potentially life-threatening, and you should not do it. The warning may seem unnecessary, but guzzling bleach is an unfortunately persistent problem. Unscrupulous sellers have sold miracle bleach elixirs for decades, claiming they can cure everything from cancer to AIDS, hepatitis, flu, hair loss, and more. They promoted it to parents as a way to cure autism in children. Um, of course, the health claims are false, I would imagine. Yeah. When users prepare the solution as instructed, it turns into the potent bleaching agent chlorine dioxide, which is an industrial cleanser. God, the, the smell alone would be repulsive. Yeah, it you would know what I'm be. saying? Yes. Yeah. It's toxic to drink. It can cause severe diarrhea, vomiting, life-threatening, low blood pressure, acute liver failure, and damage to the digestive tract and kidneys. But you'll be clean inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's important. When they do the autopsy, they'll go, man. There's nothing here. They're bleached out. <laughs> this is clean. <clears throat> and then these psychologists could then eat them. Can you eat bleached human flesh? That's the question. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I think you can. Really? Once you get past your repulsion of that. Yeah. Once you um, go, well, you know what? It's a little white. Tastes like chicken. Chicken's white meat. Yeah. In this week's warning, the FDA noted that some sellers will warn consumers that vomiting and diarrhea are common. <clears throat> oh, and it indicates that the solution is working. The claim is false. Hmm. Uh, the agency released an identical warning back in 2010, but it said it continued to receive many reports. People are still buying this stuff. Hmm. I guess you can get it online. Um, <laughs> listen to this. Products have been hard to scrub out. Uh-huh, bunny. Because the claims on social media, they're uh, promoted with false health information. Most of the claims can be traced back to Jim Humble. Yep. He's the founder and archbishop of the, get this, folks, Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing, also known as the Church of Bleach. Imagine he's one of these dudes. This is just gripes me. He's one of these dudes. He's a businessman. Comes up with this concoction, gets his 5013C, mm -hmm. says he's a church, and now he doesn't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. he's exa that just irks he my just nerve. Kills people. <clears throat> just irks my nerve, man. Uh, this nut. Yeah, I don't think we'd have as many churches as we do. Oh, you that wouldn't. wasn't existence. No, you wouldn't, yeah. Because they're not even good businessmen. But mm -hmm. uh, they are when you don't have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get to keep all that money. Oh, yeah, and they build their little kingdom. Yeah, yeah. This uh, idiot has been touting the solution for nearly two decades, referring to it as miracle or master mineral solution. It's the chlorine dioxide protocol and water purification solution. He's a former Scientologist. There you go. See, and that's another religion mm -hmm. that shouldn't be 5013C. They shouldn't mm -hmm. be tax exempt. They make billions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Off their books and people. you got to pay all kinds of money to be into that cult. Yep. Um, so he's a former Scientologist who reportedly claims to be a billion-year-old god oh, for the Andromeda galaxy. So, Jesus. <laughs> well, he's not claiming he's the Messiah. He's no. not claiming he's the chosen one. He's not claiming he's the king of Israel. But he is claiming to be a billion-year-old god. From Andrew Media, Media Galaxy. God of the bleach. You God of the bleach. Now, I would almost believe him if he didn't say billion year old. Mm -hmm. I think that's. Yeah, that's way too uh, old. Well, yeah. How can you how can you put an age limit on a god, little G God? Yeah. He's silly. Mm -hmm. Andrew Media, really? What's an Andrew Media? Oh, I have no idea. Nothing good comes out of Andrew Media. No. Not if you would have said the reptilian. Yeah. He promotes the bleaching agent as an official religious sacrament that has the potential to overcome most diseases known to mankind. He should know. He's been around a billion years. Yeah. I don't know why we're not listening to this guy. Ish. There's another church member named Kerry Rivera. Uh, it's a bishop in the church. Explicitly touted this stuff. Oh, as enemas. You can't, you can't beat that. Let's put bleach up your erectum. <laughs> 
and let's see what happens. They oh touted Lord. it to parents as a cure for autism. So these poor kids oh are getting God. a bleached butt. Uh, Rivera claims that the solution kills pathogens in the intestines that cause autism. Wow. Dear Lord. Wow, oh wow, wow, gosh. wow. That is just demonic uh, child sexual abuse. This is horrible. Dear Lord. Oh, my God. Horrible, 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 horrible. Anyway, if you want to... <laughs> If you want to try some of this stuff, you can email me. Let me know how it went. <laughs> and you can get it. Um, if you live that long. If you live that long, you can get it. Uh, there's books about the solutions aimed at parents with autism. And as November of last year, it carried the Amazon's choice label. Yeah, so, so when you, you go, buy this crap on Amazon. Yeah, and it's their choice. They prefer it. They prefer this kind of bleach. Uh, the email, um, let's see, Amazon noted has since stopped selling it. Oh, oh, the books. Oh, but I think they, you still can get the bleach, or you can make it yourself. So let me know what happens. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. We're going to do one more story, but let's take a commercial a little, a little break. Okay. All right. Recently, spiritual attacks on innocent people have increased considerably. This is partly due to society's transformation into a satanic cult. Most people are clueless or hopeless in combating this spiritual mayhem. We wish to offer two good books to overcome these attacks. First, Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, offers one of the most effective training systems in combating spiritual darkness in order to gain personal freedom. Second, Eyes to See Unseen Enemies teaches how to see the hidden dangers which are all around us, even in places we would least expect them. Both books can be purchased on Amazon.com as a paperback or ebook. It is our desire that you will take advantage of these opportunities to increase your effectiveness in spiritual warfare and learn how to fight back instead of being a victim. We'll see you on the battlefield. And we're back. Uh, I just want to thank the hundreds and thousands of people who have pre-ordered the um, Hermantown mm. funk it up song yeah and um, so when it gets released on September 1st mm -hmm. it just it's it's just gonna take over it's gonna be huge it's huge. gonna be huge it's gonna be huge in fact um, I'm up for a bleach award <laughs> uh, for that um, and um, it's gonna present yeah they have a trophy of a bleach bottle for the best bleach song of 2019, and it's going to be presented. I'm very excited about this by a Andromeda uh, dude there that's you been go. around a long time. And I, I'm not going to mention any names, but he's been in the industry a long time, and I think that's really cool. I'm very happy about that. And I, I heard the dinner for that award show is going to be special, oh. special white meat. So I'm excited about that. But I want to thank the hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who have pre ordered uh, the song, and they're so excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. Uh, yeah, even though they're repulsed by it, I, I'm just I thank you very much for for that. Yeah, people are repulsed by that song. I can tell. They listen to it. They go, Gosh, that music's good, but that video is repulsive. Dark. Oh well, yeah, it scares them. I'm scared. I don't live in a world like that. How can you say I live in a world like mm. that? I live in a happy place. That's right. It's not surrounded by people who want to. These aliens who want to kill me, destroy <laughs> me. There's no way. The devil's not real. Okay, this is, um, once again, the segment on Freedom Friday that says the way things ought to be. Or the way be. things ought to be. And we found this story, and it's really, uh, it's nice. Oklahoma boy, he's 12 years old. He rescues a two-year-old who was locked in a hot car. And how did that little boy get in there? Huh? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I don't like it. A 12-year-old boy in Oklahoma is being hailed as a hero for rescuing a two-year-old boy that was locked in a hot car on a hot summer day. Wow. Ben Therot is a good Samaritan. He came to the rescue with a ratchet strap from his mother's car. He said, I started hitting the side window. It didn't burst. It bit it pretty badly, he said. He said, I swung over my shoulder. I hit it right in the center, and then I hit it a couple more times, and then I climbed on the windshield... <laughs> I stomped on it, and then it cracked pretty badly again. Then the lady went and grabbed that hanger thing, and then I put the hook in the windshield and pulled it out, and then I unlocked it. 
Mm, mm, <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Tulsa police said Tuesday's heat index was 116. Dear Lord. So, you know, you could, oh you could cook biscuits on the dashboard of a car uh, yeah. at 105. Our police department just did that last week. And they ate them, too. Do you know that? Did they? they no, ate, I didn't know that. Yeah, people said, did you eat them? They said, yeah, they were edible. Wow. Yeah. Good for them. Um, good for them. <laughs> you know, it's, they don't have anything else to do. They just eat biscuits that you cook on the hot dash. We live wow. in Mesquite, yep. folks. Uh, investigators found the mother was shopping, and they issued her 250 Now, what happens? What, what are you thinking? How can you go shopping? How? Do, here's the other problem I have. A $250 ticket? Yeah. I shouldn't know. she be I just, just my mouth just went open? Shouldn't she be thrown in jail for child abuse, child mm-hmm. endangerment? Yeah. Attempted murder? I mean anything. Let the DA sort it out. Yeah. You're a cop. Your job is just to be the funnel to the justice system. Let the DA go, well, we don't really have attempted murder here, but we're gonna get her for child abuse. But if you just let her go on a two hundred fifty dollar ticket. Yeah, she can do it again. It's and a, other mothers are not, de- or other people are not detoured from. No, and, and then she gets to drive away with a with a ticket and her almost dead kid. She oh yeah. Went, so then it says the police have been looking into the mom's story, and she said it was an accident, claiming she thought another adult was watching the child. Really? Really? What adult is that then? Yeah. And then the police then asked why the car was not running and also locked. I thought another adult was watching my kid. I'm just a good mother. I'm shopping for whatever I'm shopping for. Yeah, so then why was the pl- uh, the car locked? Locked. And the car went... Uh, and not <laughs> running. So there's no air... Oh, my goodness. So the Tulsa police... The Tulsa police said the mother got the ticket under the forget-me-not law? Forget-me-not law? Are you stupid? How about oh. child endangerment law? But they said she, they, they didn't arrest her because the child was not seriously injured. Oh, good Lord. What kind of stupid bleached world do we live in? She wasn't arrested because the child was not seriously hurt, and therefore it was not a strong enough case for child neglect. Really? That's just stupid. Now, see, when I was when I was a cop, the oh, whole, this story is just turned into something else. <laughs> yeah. When I was a cop, the whole thing was is that you went through all your cop training, and you were constantly told you're you're the funnel. You're the first part in the justice system. You go out there, you you go, oh, a crime was, you know, you determine if a crime was violated. You hook this guy up or whatever. You do, you do the jail thing and you you charge him. It's up to the, the, the district attorney yeah. or the mm-hmm. city attorney, whoever's filing these things, to determine if the charges fit. Right. You know, I, you can't just go, as a cop, you can't go out and arrest a person for murder if they just threw a cigarette butt on the thing. But you can arrest them for littering, maybe mm-hmm. some other things, loitering or whatever else they're doing. And and then the DA or whatever, they determine whether the or crime, not. Mm-hmm. if they're going to file or not. They'll drop the charges, drop them down. But you just say, you determine, I mean, I don't know what law school these cops went to, but they determined... The, the, because the kid wasn't seriously hurt, and it was not a strong enough case. Mm-mm. So the kid had to die or almost die mm-hmm. before you could charge her? Yeah, and so you left this child with this idiot so she can endanger him I'm again. Te- I'm telling you, this world is is insane. So, so here's some of the comments. Uh, this guy says, so, so the little guy has to die before she gets charged. Right. Here's another person. She wasn't arrested because the child was not seriously hurt and therefore was not strong enough case for child neglect. Ridiculous. Um, another person said, I would like to think she learned a lesson, but it was very cheap and I'm concerned for the toddler's future welfare. Mm-hmm. I expect the police are frustrated also with the law of it. I don't think the I police, think I think so. they're stupid. Yeah. They should have hooked her up and if the DA didn't want to file it, then he didn't file it, but they should. she should have been hooked up yeah. and that kid should have been taken to protective custody. I don't know what universe I live in. This doesn't make sense. You may want maybe just take the kid down to the local judge and have him have him be a pedophile, have him molested. Let's do that. And yeah. Drink some bleach. And eat some human flesh. And take him to the king of Israel. Have him divide him in half, mm-hmm. like Solomon. There you go. Wow. This uh, person says, take your small kids in the store with you. This should not even be a discussion. I agree. Never leave them unattended unless they're old enough to help themselves. I saw an old guy in a car today. 
Yeah, we did. And it was a hundred and, I don't know, seven? Yeah. He was Something in a parking like lot. Over a hundred. And he was an old man. Had to be uh, in his 90s. Yeah. And the windows were rolled down. And the windows were rolled down. He's just sitting there panting like a Labrador. I don't know where his, whoever was driving. He was in a passenger seat. Yep. So they, you can't do that. And I looked at you him and he was still alive. You can't leave anybody just, in a, in a no. Ford car, for crying out loud. No. Yeah. I looked at him like he needed help. He said, get out of here. <laughs> I'll put you in the face. Oh, man. It's, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, here's a person that says, so Tulsa equates the life of a child with a speeding ticket? Incredible. Man. Anyway, the kid's a hero, but like all of these, most of these stories, there's another thing to it. Twist. Yeah, this it, one's a huge twist. It's a huge twist. So there's good news and bad news. The good news is he's, he's a hero. He's a kick-ass kid. The justice system sucks. Mm -hmm. Literally sucks. Oh, well, anyway, anyway. Well, that's Freedom Friday, folks. I wish we had freedom from this world. Oh, yes. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. I Someday we will. I look forward to it every day. We won't be doing it Freedom Friday because I won't be here. That's right. Yep. We won't be here. No. So. So, chat. <laughs> Thank you.